He'll go there. He'll go it's there, and he won't, and he doesn't even care if he's unsympathetic. He's like a Nicholson that way. Thelma and Louise. Um, this really is a movie that became, and characters that became icon. The mm -hmm. first great movie of two women. Mm -hmm. And I thank Ridley Scott, really, for putting in that heroic uh, setting, because that story could have been told in a much more intimate fashion, and, we, and it, would have, it would have worked, I think, but it maybe would not have made us into the icon kind of situation yeah. that we stumbled upon. But there was something about the way he put it together that uh, really did that. He made it quite heroic. Roll tape, I forgot for a moment that he did this roll tape. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Yep. Harold, this is Louise. Let me talk to the police. Hey, Louise. Uh huh. Let me talk to the police. The, what do you mean? There, there's no police here. Hey, hey, where are you girls anyway? Just wait, Daryl. Will you let me talk to whoever's in charge there? How do you know they're? Hello, Miss, Miss uh, Sawyer. I'm uh, Investigator Hal Slocum, Arkansas State Police. How are you? Well, I've been better. <laughs> Be careful with that gun. Yes, sir, no. The girls are in some hot water. You both okay? Neither one of you hurt? Oh, yes, sir. We're, we're fine. We're both fine. Good. You want to tell me what happened? Sure, over coffee sometime. I'll buy. I want you to know, neither one of you are charged with murder yet. You're just still wanted for questioning. Although now, Mrs. Dickinson's wanted in Oklahoma for armed robbery. No kidding. Look, uh, we got to go. I'll call you back, all right? Miss Sawyer, I don't think you all are going to make it to Mexico. We should talk. Please, I want to help you. God, that J.D. Kelly, a little shit. Boy. Boy. Thelma, how did they know we're going to Mexico, huh? How'd they know that? You told that thieving little s where we were going? Oh. <clears throat> I huh? just, uh, I just told him if he ever got to Mexico, he should look us up. <laughs> if he ever got to Mexico. <laughs> How good was Brad Pitt, too, in that Pretty movie? Good. But this is another gal, you know, that's just the best. And, and we work so well, Gene and I, together that I think that. Have you found this often? I mean, do you, I mean, my impression is that most of the time you find some chemistry, some, most of the time. Yeah, I, I hope or so. Or you've been lucky by the cast. I hope so, yeah, yeah. I, or lucky or verbal or whatever, but it, yeah, that, that was a very yin-yang kind of situation. I'm not quite sure how it divided up, but we definitely worked well. And she's real smart, too, you know. Yeah. It takes somebody very smart to play a dummy. And uh, she's Take somebody could, smart to play dumb. Definitely. Tim is proven dumb. that, you know. <laughs> nobody plays a jerk better than he does. And Goldie's really smart. Okay. Here we go. Bull Durham. Um, you play Annie. And Kevin Costner plays um, Crash. Take a look. What? Who dresses you? I mean, do you think this is a little excessive for the Carolina League? The road of excess leads to the Palace of Wisdom, William Blake. But William Blake? William Blake. What, William Blake? William Blake! What do you mean, William Blake? I mean, William Blake! Who are you? I mean, do you, do you have a job? I teach part-time at Alamance Junior College. English 101 and beginning composition. You know, having a conversation with you is like a, is, is, is like a Martian talking to a fungo. Oh, cute. That's really cute. You know, just because sometimes you manage to be clever and you have a nice smile does not mean you are not full of shit. But I'm full of shit. You're full I'm of full shit. I'm full of shit. You are full of shit. chastity was your idea. I know. I'm telling I you. Just get your hands out. I never That's told what him to stay oh, yes, out of your did. bed. You most certainly I did. I never told him to stay out of your yes, bed. Yes, you did. I told him that a player on a street has to respect the street. Fine. You know why? Because they don't, they don't happen very often. Why? If you believe you're playing well because you're getting laid, or because you're not getting laid, or because you wear women's underwear, then you are. And you should know that. Come on, Annie. Think of something clever to say, huh? Something for the magic, religion, bullshit. Come on, dazzle me.
What? I said I want you. Stop it. Cut out of the proper moment. Ooh, Ooh. How cute is he? <laughs> you know, that's a funny... You want a story about that scene? Yes. When I auditioned, there was one scene that just, I said, something's, it's like there's a piece out of the scene. It doesn't work. I don't know what's wrong, but it just doesn't work. You know, the rest of this, you couldn't find anything wrong with that script, but this one scene didn't work. So when it came time to film that scene, which was in the place of what this scene we placed, he called us to dinner and he said, you know, I have a confession to make. There was something missing from that scene. She suddenly stops talking with an accent and you find out that she's a complete sham and that everything's a lie and I said oh my god that's too late in the movie for that we can't do that you know what so what are we going to do so we made a list of all the things at this point which we thought everybody would be saying who is she why is she dressed like that does she have a job what is her story and tried to write a scene for this transition point which is when I suddenly realized that I'm actually attracted to him and I said to him, you know, just write it for two guys. Write a fight between two guys that are trying to manage the same player. And don't write it for a woman. And that's the scene that he wrote. Sheldon wrote the thing, too. Yeah. He wrote it and addressed all the questions that we thought the audience would be asking at that point. And wrote a fight between two guys that were arguing over the management of this one player. And that's what ended up. Now, when you left this movie, were you and Tim? Tim and I were friends at that point, you know, and we were both kind of trying to figure out what was going on in our lives, but we definitely were in a friendship, you know, Kevin and I were also in a friendship, but something was definitely starting to shift. Um, but I left there, and, and then Tim and I saw each other in New York a number of months later. I went to it back to Italy for a while, and then I came back after Christmas, and in around February, March, of the following year, Tim came from California and very seriously moved his record collection to New York. And that's how I that's knew something was up. That's a serious statement, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, so we started to see each other then. But, you know, he was, uh, he was so unusual and so funny and so good at what he did that I definitely was taken aback. You know, he it was... Was the difference in age ever? No. It but was... now everybody talks about it, not about you. Well, they started but, talking about, about that about at White Palace. Of I know. White mm -hmm. Palace, they made a big fuss. I, I've just never gotten that, you know. I have friends like Jake Gyllenhaal, I consider mm -hmm. a friend, and uh, Ryan and Reese Witherspoon and Ryan Phillippe. Mm -hmm. People that are much younger. I have friends that are older, you know, mm -hmm. Paul and Joanne, mm -hmm. and, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I've never really, maybe it's my own way of denying, you know, my mortality. I don't know. Age has never loomed really significantly for me because there's some people that are incredibly immature at 60 and other That's people that are very cool at 20. and right. or very wise at 20. Very wise at 20. So I never really paid attention. And, I, and there was, uh, I guess I just didn't think ahead, you know, to, to what difference in age would mean or anything. And it actually kind of worked because, you know, because I was older, I, my career was in a different place and I could have babies without even thinking about, you know, or more babies because I already had one at that point, but without worrying about what it meant and without being incredibly competitive, which happens anyway in this business. And, and so I don't know, for us it, it, it's, it's worked out all right. And I like the fact that his perspective is different than mine in so many ways. And, and I'm so hard to live with that he's aging quite rapidly. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll probably catch up pretty soon, you know, I'm so difficult. Hey, we, we've done an hour here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next time soon, we'll talk about politics. Especially as they kick me out, you can save my ass in that way. <laughs> All right, we'll see what's going on by then. All right. How's your throat? It's okay. Good.